Anybody out there got a copy on this radio? 766 Pennsylvania. Six two zero, I think you said. Conditions are kind of fading out too. Uh, I do hear you in there. Hi, how are you doing today? You got a Madison, and, and you're gonna put a DDS VFO into it? Oh, wow, that's awesome. I don't normally promote myself at all, but if you want to look up my YouTube channel... Yeah. Oh, uh, well, thank you so much. That's great. I'll check it out. Thank you. All right, YouTube. Hello. Thank you for watching. A very big thank you to Toby at Troy Radio, who has been absolutely fabulous with me and uh, working through some issues here related to the DDS VFOs. So today we're going to take a look at this President Madison. This is my second install of a DDS VFO. This unit here has everything going in it but one function that's not working and I'll get to that at some point in time. I think honestly this issue is going to get fixed pretty quickly with a little help from uh, Troy Radio to track down where the problem's at. I want to go over a couple things for anybody that that uh, has an interest in them. I could have went ahead and put on YouTube the wiring of this or the installation of the board which is on the reverse side but I ran into some issues here that were unforeseen so I had to delete all that video footage. I do like to do things from start to finish absolutely complete but this is going to be one of the times where that's not going to happen. I just want to show you some things here in the menu that you'll need to be aware of. Okay, the first menu item is number one. Number two is the Roger Beep. I'm not going to get into that right now. This is probably about the second or, well, this is actually like the third or fourth board, depending upon how you want to look at it, that I've messed with. Now, this particular board here, the crystal frequency only needs to be shifted by 79 hertz. The last ones I did had to be shifted by 3300, 3400 to set them on frequency. There's a bunch of other stuff about frequency that's very, very important and uh, is becoming a factor in this DDS BFO installs. But due to the complexity of it, I'm not going to get into it at this point in time. So that's to set the reference oscillator where it needs to be, which for channel 20 here would be 35005 for the VCO. Now if we keep going here, what I did want to point out, I'm going to skip the drive level for now. And we're going to go right to menu number 15, uh, which is the offset LSB receive. 16 is offset LSB transmit offset LSB receive, the whole way up to 18, which is offset USB transmit. For a Madison, you're going to want these set to minus 1500 for item 15. When you change 15, item 16 will change as well. And then for 17, you're going to want plus 1500. And when you change 17, 18 will change as well. So I just wanted to make that known because when I did this in the 142 GTL, the offsets were plus and minus 2.5 kilohertz. And if we go back to channel mode, there's a problem with this DDS BFO board. I've contacted uh, Troy Radio, and uh, I think we're perhaps having a communication problem again. But anyway... The VFO install is completely done on my part here with what I can do. Uh, the radio's, for all practical purposes, close to 100% operational. However, the Roger Beat function is not working like it's supposed to. I need to come up with a fix for that without sending the board back to Troy Radio because to do so would be, it would be a major ordeal.
thank you Toby at Troy Radio for sending me two more boards here. So we'll just have to work through these things as they come along. Just kind of working off of things that are basically in front of me here. Things that I've talked about in other videos. You'll notice that I went ahead and I used the President logo here with the lens. And that lens did what I thought it was going to do. It's going to obstruct the view of the OLED display because of the blacking that was meant to go around the original. I didn't think I was going to be able to use this because I didn't think I could take the red filter off of it. But anyway, regardless, the only way to really fix that problem is to pull this President logo off and replace this with an all clear lens. Now this is something else I don't want to get into here, but on the channel 9 switch here, when I push in the channel 9 switch that pulls in a relay and that relay connects through a, a piece of micro dot coax to the back panel to a BNC and that puts the frequency counter in line uh, with the SI5351 oscillator board. Just let it be known that that's why the channel 9 light is on there. It doesn't actually change the frequency, it just hooks up the frequency counter to the radio without having to take the cover off the radio. This is the Spectrum Amplifier board that I built for this. There's just uh, three adjustments on it. One of them is a gain adjustment, which is that pot there. So with that pot the whole way down, that's normal signal levels. And when I turn the gain up, There you can see it brings the spectrum up more. So that's doing a pretty darn good job uh, for some fly by the seat of my pants engineering. Also too, this spectrum amplifier board can't overdrive the Arduino. The output voltage on it is clamped so it can't exceed a high enough voltage to damage the Arduino. So to get out of that, all you have to do is tap this once, or you can just tap the transmit button to send you out of that spectrum. Now I want to touch on the problem that I'm having with it. When I said that almost entirely all of it is okay or working, the one function that does not work is the relay for the Roger Beep. The Roger Beep will still work on this. It's not a huge ordeal. But, you know, I would like everything to be working on this. Otherwise, uh, yeah, <laughs> that would just drive me nuts. So what I did here is I pulled this board out and I checked the relay itself to make sure that we had a good relay coil. The relay coil is fine in this. So I don't have a schematic for this. But for some reason, this read relay is not receiving 5 volts here. It should be 5 volts when this unit is in receive prior to going into transmit and when it comes out of transmit and holds the PTT line low for the Roger beep to come through, after that transition this relay should close in order to bring your receive speaker back on. So without this relay working, I had no receive audio. Now you can see there's two gray wires here, and those two gray wires were the break to the received speaker at the mic jack. So what I did in order to get this unit to work is I just restored the gray wire back together. You can see where I heat shrunk it here, where it goes up into pin number three of the mic jack. So I just uh, soldered that back together and left these two gray wires for that relay off. If you understand what I'm getting at. The only purpose of that relay was to either make or break that connection and uh, it's not making or breaking. It's breaking but it's not making. <laughs> so what I want to do is hopefully figure out a way to fix this. If I had to take a big guess here and I would say probably a pretty good one, I would say the problem is probably under this microcontroller board but I don't know that for certain. I was under the assumption that there's a transistor turning this relay on. 
from what I heard from Toby, that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems that this relay needs to receive power and not be pulled down. In other words, there's not a pull down transistor on this to pull this to ground with BCC being constant. It's normally grounded and it receives BCC to pull on. So I need to check and see if I can locate the pin that may be either directly driving this or indirectly driving this relay. Reverting back to what I was saying about this display here, at some point in time, I'm not sure if this will come back out or not. I didn't think it would pop out of there, to be honest with you. If it wanted to pop out of there, I wouldn't even have messed with it. <laughs> this is what I was saying about changing to get rid of the blacking so that way it's the uh, the OLED is visible from a much wider angle uh, it doesn't look as nice but that definitely fixes that problem some of the reason you can see the edges here or this just needs sanded off that piece will go in there and be pretty perfect uh, you won't even really be able to to see the seam It's just a blacking on the back that narrows the field of vision on it. All in all, it's pretty beautiful. So uh, I'm real happy about this. I'm real happy that Toby uh, took the time to send me two more boards. I just have to get through this problem with the reed relay not pulling in. And then uh, this radio will be a done deal. I didn't say this either, but this was covered in one of my videos I did. Uh, on the 142 GTO. I did the same thing in here, the exact same board, but it switches a little bit differently. So the SSB Roger Beep level is here, and the AM Roger Beep level is here. They're completely independent. That kind of solved that issue with that, with the beep volume. So that makes me pretty happy. I just have to figure out where the connection is missing between that Arduino pin and um, that read relay. So anyway, hey, thank you for watching my videos. You take care and have a great day.